Where does travel in 2023 compare to last year? How is return to office and that business travel? How is that impacting all that? Uh, I think there are three things that set apart travel this year. Uh, one is this is the first time that the, the global economy truly is reopened for travel. Uh, number two, China is, you know, is open for business. And this is 18.5 percent of the global population that is now able to travel. That is a big impact. And that can potentially have a big impact on travel this year. The third thing, as you mentioned, the return to travel, preferences have shifted. People continue to spend money on travel and experiences, and that really has been the long-lasting and the key differentiator in travel. So really, China's 19, almost 19 percent of the global travel market did not know that. That's global population. Global yeah. population. Okay, yeah. so it kind of crosses over to travel, but they're obviously a big chunk of the travel. That's right. So I want to focus on those Chinese travelers just for a second. A lot of retail brands, luxury brands, spirits brands, they really depend on Chinese <clears throat> travelers to buy when they're traveling to different countries. So what is the Chinese travel outlook right now? We've seen the reopening kind of have some fits and starts. Yeah, so Ch China has been a fascinating story to watch for a number of reasons. One is we expected this big wave to happen when China reopened. That's not what's been happening. What's been happening is it's been more of a gradual recovery in travel for, from Chinese travelers. But, but second, when they're traveling, as you mentioned, the luxury sector, they're not buying luxury like they have in the past. What's actually happening is that, that experience uh, excitement really is, uh, really is catching fire. And so what we've seen in the U.S., of people spending money on experiences in Europe. Now it's traveling to China, where people, when they travel abroad, they're spending money on experiences and less of those things. Interesting. Let's really focus on the U.S. We mentioned Airbnb. They <clears throat> said that this current quarter might be a little soft, but they were expecting a very strong summer travel season. What's your data showing about the current quarter and about what we're seeing in the second half of the year? So without a doubt, consumers are becoming more price sensitive. They have to balance out between their incomes, their savings, and their credit availability, you know, where they're going to spend their money. And when making that calculus, when making that decision, they're looking at that appetite and that preference to travel and just how far their money can go. Top destinations for American travelers really are seeing that Eiffel Tower, seeing the Colosseum in Rome, and seeing the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin. Those are really the top destinations of where people are going today. All right, we're just showing a graphic. Experience is spending up 65%. So when does that start to moderate, or is that just the new normal? People just want to go out and have a good time as opposed to buying things online. Well, so I think that, you know, what we've seen since the pandemic, you know, people stuff their closets with a bunch of things. Uh, and now we're, we're in this experience economy. But this is not new. You know, Frank, before the pandemic, we were all about experiences. Mm -hmm. And that experience economy was really taking off. And now we've just seen that really have its legs. And so people have driven that demand for experiences, and it's been very long-lasting. So I'm not sure that it's such a fad anymore. I think that we're seeing that really, really quite sticky. All right, so you are the global economist for MasterCard. I want to ask you a big macro question. We have a debt ceiling situation going on. We have a banking situation going on that could certainly disrupt the U.S. economy. Um, potentially, how would that impact the travel outlook for the rest of the year? So I think, you know, when we talk about the debt ceiling, you know, clearly it's a, it's a terrible position to play uh, with uh, the uh, financial security of the United States. Um, when we think about some of the other factors affecting the outlook, you know, for people on the ground, they care about what's happening in their pocketbook. They care about their check that they're seeing, if they're receiving their income. They care about what's happening in their bank account, and they care about their accessibility to credit. And so they really are looking at that, that portfolio of how they're able to spend. And that spending is decided by what they need, what they want to buy, and prices, as you mentioned. And that really is determining that outlook for, uh, for spending.